Hey, everybody, this is Joe Witte. I'm an executive coach at Velocity. And if you haven't seen the first part of the series, I'd recommend you go back, check it out. What I do in the first part is I introduce uh, the concept of leaders moving up in an organization and how it's really important for us to adapt our approach. And we need to incorporate four personality traits as we either get promoted up or our organization grows ben uh, beneath us. And those traits include confidence, humility, adaptability, and desire, what I call the Chad principles. So we've got to learn new skills. Otherwise, our organization can hit what we deem the Peter principle, which is when people are promoted one level above their competency. So go back, check it out. On this episode, what I want to cover are the specific seven rungs of the leader ladder and essentially breaking down how each of these promotions up in a larger organization requires us to change our job and change our mindset and change our communication. So I want to take, for example, Alan Mulally, who was the CEO at Boeing, proved himself to be an amazing leader, and then suddenly moved over to Ford, a consumer automobile and industry. So you'd say, well, theoretically, how can a guy from defense systems and airplanes suddenly go and lead a consumer truck company to massive growth. Does he know anything about planes or missiles or, de or, or defense systems? He probably knows something. And how much does he know about trucks? Maybe not quite as much as you think. However, he was really successful. It's because his job didn't actually change that much. His job had to do with establishing the culture, establishing the vision, public relations, and investor relations, which he did exceptionally well. So is that something that, um, you know, the, um, the frontline manager is responsible for? The person who does quality assurance goes and establishes that? Of course not. In the same way that Alan Mulally does not go down and do quality assurance when these trucks are coming off the line. We're talking about a big difference, but sometimes this is where we get lost in management is knowing what our roles are in our organization and how we can fine tune those and adapt. So I'm gonna go through the seven rungs of the leader ladder and uh, talk a little bit about those more. So I'm gonna start at the top, level seven, what I call the visionary. This is the individual that is the, sets and establishes the big vision and the culture of the organization. Um, they're gonna solve macro problems. Um, they're gonna build team leaders and executives and hire team leaders and executives who can execute their vision. Um, and they're really ultimately responsible for everything that happens in the organization. They're just not gonna micromanage everything. Um, high level of strategy, low level of tactics. And usually this is the C level and of course the board. Level six, I call the strategists. They're going to take the vision established by the C level and the board and they're gonna execute it. Um, they're gonna make sure that's implemented and that everybody understands what that culture is and that's, that's pushed down on that level. Um, they're gonna carry out the intent of the, um, the C level and the board. And, um, you know, something that, that a lot of these usually EVPs and VPs um, can get caught up in as a risk area is becoming spreadsheet leaders, right? They're going to collect a lot of the data and key performance indicators and pass them up and say, here's how we're doing. Sometimes they forget that people on the, on the front ground have to execute that. So just a word of, of caution. The next level five, I call the optimizer. These folks are oftentimes developing process and systems so that your team can operate more efficiently and effectively. This gets into step-by-step -step optimization, finding technologies that can make you more efficient, looking at the way things have been done and asking the question, can they get better, right? We want to make sure that we don't say, well, we've always done it this way. Therefore, this is the way we're going to do it. Um, they really serve as that middle conduit between frontline people on the ground who are engaging with consumers and building products and the high-level visionaries and making sure that the message is passed up and down and serving as a buffer. Um, usually, again, a vice president or director level. Um, and they're also going to enforce the training and standards um, that are being established. Level four, I like to call the organizer, often responsible for a lot of di direct reports. They're going to give the instructions to make sure that, that people are doing the tasks properly. A lot of training going on here, making sure they have the right tools, expectations, uh, the right software, standards. Um, safety initiatives, and that everything is done in the right time frame by, again, that high level, level seven leaders who are saying, hey, this is our big objective for the quarter or for the year. Um, 
heavy in supervision, heavy in um, accountability, and making sure that daily tasks are and daily operations are run pretty regularly. Um, again, they still have to know what the, the, the culture and vision is from the sea the levels and, and carry that out. Um, and these are the managers um, who, who are, um, have their roll up their sleeves and, and, and getting, getting things done and getting it dirty. Level three, I like to call the collaborator. Um, this, these are usually, you know, really all the team members, but sometimes senior uh, team leaders who are on the front line and basically um, could be project managers. Um, they're pulling teams together to say, hey, on the front level, we've got a challenge, right? And how do we solve this challenge? And here's something that can make it better. And they may pass that up to uh, the level four um, organizer and say, if we had this software, this could be more efficient. If we remove this process, it could save us a lot of time. We're having too many meetings or we can make our meetings more effective. Um, what are the tools and systems they need to, to be more effective? So these are people who are, are coming up with ideas and innovating on the front lines. Level two, I call the initiator. They see a problem that needs to get done and they just do it without being asked. Um, they take initiative. Um, these are experienced frontline people. Um, they've got some autonomy because they've been doing things a long time and they're a subject matter expert. Um, certainly you can get in some groups where you get some scientists or senior software engineers and, and they may just go find a new code or a new process that they can operate on their team or on themselves just to do things better. Level one, I call the example. These are the people who are, who are doing the work. Um, this could be anybody from a chef to a solo F-16 fighter pilot. Um, they're usually not delegating to people. Of course, chefs are, but it could be a high level cook. Um, and, um, they're just going to do the task to the best of their ability. Question you may think is, well, are they leaders? And you're first be like, well, they don't manage anybody directly potentially. So, so no, but absolutely they're leaders because they lead by their example. Um, they can still, um, that can include showing up on time asking good questions, executing the intent of the mission, showing everybody around them how things are done and how, how things are done right. So that's a summary of the seven rungs of the leader ladder. In our next uh, discussion, we'll dive a little bit on some of the challenges that people face moving up and sometimes down on a leader ladder and, and really diving into what leadership means and how we need to be a servant leader. So thank you everybody for joining and we'll get together soon.